As a preface to this review, I absolutely love every single Scream film that has been released so far in their own merit and right. Now, my all-time favorite Scream film is Scream 2 because while Scream 1 really, really outdid itself and just rejuvenated the entire horror slasher genres, Scream 2 did basically the same as Scream 1, but up the ante, made it bigger, expanded the lore, and just overall gave you so many plot twists in Scream 2. Now, I'm a huge supporter of the Scream films. Case in point, I still like Scream 3, even though it is a dog shit film. It's still fun to watch, but it's just a shit film. Scream 4 isn't really that good either. You can mainly just see every single kill coming from a mile away, but it's still an entertaining good time to watch through. Scream 5, about a year and a half ago, I watched in theaters and I reviewed on here and on YouTube, and Scream 5, I was entertained, but at the biggest fault ever when it came to me watching a Scream film. Scream 5, I appreciated the new writer-director's attempts at everything that they did in Scream 5, bringing back pre-existing characters, adding in new characters. I enjoyed that they kept the established formula. They even upped the ante for the whole it being a sequel, but technically not really, making it a requel. And I, I appreciated the writing that they did for the new age for Scream. I didn't like basically everything else in Scream 5, mainly that you could tell when every kill was gonna happen. It wasn't really a plot twisted film. You basically saw everything coming and not just that, most of the kills glorified the living hell out of the person dying. I don't like that, especially ever since the Lone Survivor film with Mark Wahlberg where every single major death in that film was so extremely glorified and honestly that's what they did entirely in Scream 5. Now this is the Scream 6 review. Does it live up to its legacy for all Screams? Let's find out. The story of Scream 6 is basically a continuation of Scream 5, the requel, and Scream 6 is no longer set in Woodsboro. It's now located in New York City. But essentially, it's, it's the exact same thing as all the other Scream films, which if you watch Scream, if you like Scream, you would like that just because you know what to expect in Scream at this point. Meta horror comedy mixed with, you know, new age kind of tropes for horror. Now, Scream 6 is set in New York City and it follows Sam and Tara Carpenter who survived the Woodsboro murders in Scream 5. Plus, we get more of the new characters that are now becoming pre-existing characters, and we get some of the old, old pre-existing characters that survived in Scream 5. Plus, we actually get characters back from, say, Scream 4, and they're not even just cameos. They actually fit into the main story. And that's the one thing I do love about Scream 6 is that they basically paid homage to the entire Scream legacy, not just Scream 5. Even though this is a continuation and a sequel to Scream 5 directly, they still brought in basically everything from the original Screams, just every single Scream. Now, as I stated, the Scream 6 story is set in New York City, and honestly, the story of Scream 6 is the best part of Scream 6. Honestly, when you focus on the story and the plotting, the twists not only do become gotchas by the end of the film, but also they're actually witty and the twists for the story actually make a lot of sense. And I love that they did try and do like a full circle, not just with the new established characters, but every single pre-existing character. Now, the setting, New York City, they used it a little bit in the story, but they could have utilized the setting of New York City so much fucking more. They could have just done Scream 6 in Wardsboro and it would have been the exact same story because honestly, the setting of Scream 6 didn't matter whatsoever. The only exception was 
a scene when they ran into a convenience store right across the, the block because they were getting chased. And then Ghostface ends up wielding a shotgun through that scene, which that was one of the dumbest things that they did in this film. But essentially for the story, the setting didn't really matter whatso fucking ever. And plus the fact that even though it didn't matter at all, it also kind of hurt the story because there are characters in the story. Every single character in this film is somehow located within New York City. That's why I didn't really understand about the setting for the story of Scream 6. The fact that every single character inside of Scream 6 that happens along in Scream 6, every single one just randomly lives in New York City. I don't buy that coincidence whatso fucking ever. But the story overall, I appreciate what they did with the story. Six screams in, and they still find witty ways to twist the shit out of the story, especially by the end, and for it to make sense and to come full circle. I did enjoy all of that. Now, the problem, the biggest problem I would say for the story, also follows through with the horror aspect of Scream 6 in the sense of the kills and everything revolving around the murders and the killings and the stabbings. Absolutely nothing in this film, nothing is scary in Scream 6. Now, the, it, it is a horror film. This film is shot and filmed as a horror film, but the stuff within the film, the thing is Scream is built off of jump scares and everybody knows that. Everybody knows that. And there are some times throughout the entire Scream anthology where you are genuinely surprised still. But in Scream 6, there's not a single moment of being surprised. And not to mention, the logic in this film also does break immensely throughout it. Just in little bits and pieces. Like, prime example. This is a plot spoiler, just so you know. So there are killings being happened in... A whole apartment building. The killings are happening in apartment A. Apartment B is a person witnessing everything happening from window to window. Now, apartment A's people, the survivors trying to be survivors, they're trying to find a way to get out. So what does apartment B's residents do? They're watching and they're screaming to, to get help and they need help. So apartment B residents... They randomly, and we're talking like four stories in the apartment complex, randomly, apartment B's residents, they say, hang on one second. They run to their, the corner of their apartment, come back with a giant ass ladder, drop it down from window to window and expect them to crawl in out of their window into their window. That was one of the small kind of logical breaks that... I just couldn't tolerate in this film. There aren't very many logical inconsistencies, but when they happen, they're just so jarringly there that you fucking hate them so fucking much because it just doesn't make sense in any way, shape, or form that you think about it. The simplest way I can think about it is in New York City, when the fuck does a resident that lives in a four-story apartment ever need a ladder in everyday life just sitting in their apartment. That's the simplest way I can ask that part, especially. It doesn't make sense. It will never make sense. No matter how much you love this film, no matter how much you love the gore-tastic kills in this film, the logic in this film breaks a lot of the time in this film. Now, this is almost a two-hour film, and the story, as I said, the story itself is actually rather good but also by the end of the film you can clearly tell they were just trying to wrap up the film because people either died or stayed alive with absolutely no explanation I'm not going to explain which characters I'm talking about but some of them okay sure you can assume that they died but then there are characters at the end of the film that just come back after being stabbed one, even at least once and they're on their deathbed. And then at the end of the film, 
they just come wallopsing right back over like, hey, I'm here to help. It doesn't make any fucking sense. Another logical inconsistency. But you look past all of that, the story is rather decent. It's a decently written story with decent characters inside of this film. I, I honestly, I don't care that they're pandering as far as sexualities and everything in this film because they don't really throw it in your face. You know, you have a couple that are lesbians, but they don't constantly throw them in your face. Like if you were to go to a new age concert where they just sexualize the shit out of themselves, the singers and the band and everybody. Scream 6 has different sexualities, but it's not full blown in your face about it. They're just characters that could potentially die off through the film. And that's all there is to that. But again, the story is mostly solid if you just turn the fuck off of your brain and it works in the end. The visuals, audio, and overall content within Scream 6 is actually pretty damn good. The visuals and audio really hold up well. I bought this on Vudu, so I, I streamed it in full 4K and it looks really fucking good. Every single ghost face mask, and they use a shit ton. They just all look so different, yet the same. Like, you can tell when a ghost face mask is an older one. You can tell which one is the oldest one. You can tell which one is a brand new one. As well as the black levels. And the black levels, especially in like a Scream film, have to work in 4K. Because Ghostface himself is literally just a, a black prop with a white face. And most of the times, Ghostface stalks and kills people in pitch blackness. And honestly, the visuals in the 4K hold up very well for this kind of film. The audio works extremely well as well. It's nothing like Christopher Nolan or even Quentin Tarantino type audio, but for a, a new age horror, it, it's, it's, it just sounds damn clear. And the visuals and audio, I don't really have any complaints about this. The mix was really well done. I appreciated the visuals. I appreciated the black levels. I appreciated that there were a lot of kills in dark alleyways, set aside the fact that it's cliche and tropey, but in 4K, it looked really well done. And this entire film is really well filmed. And that also helps out with the 4K visuals and audio. Now, within the content, as I specify in the story part, the kills in this film, I would consider to be content for this film. And the kills, while they are genuinely gory, bloody, sorry. not They're not really gory, they're mostly just bloody. Gore is when you see like intestines and shit. Strong bloody violence is literally just that. Somebody getting stabbed and a lot of blood shows. The content though, is that the kills look really good. And the fact that they went absurd with the killings in this film, but not like over the top absurd with like intestines and shit, but over the top of, in the sense of absurdity where when a ghost face killing happens, they get stabbed a shit ton of times. And that's honestly what I really craved from a Scream film. Most Scream films, it's the horror aspect where you're trying to figure out where exactly they could potentially be and then they get stabbed once and die. In Scream 6, I'm pretty sure everybody in this entire film gets stabbed at least twice. I mean, there are people from the very beginning intro of Scream 6 that get stabbed like 15 times in a row. Now, the content in this film is rather decent. Like I said, the visuals and audio hold up very well. The story is mostly decent, set aside all the logical inconsistencies. Honestly, this film is mostly worth it just for the film itself because it's Scream. You know what to expect. They're trying to meta over their meta over their meta. And that's just, that's become Scream nowadays. So the content, mostly overall, I'd say worked very well. Plus you have bonus features and everything. So overall, the content was okay. Overall for me, Scream 6, much like Scream 5, it's not terrible, it's not like new age Hulu Hellraiser type of horror terrible, but it's Scream within 
the 2020s type of horror filmmaking. And it works for the most part, I'd say, but there's just so much faulty shit in this film that it's nowhere near a perfect or even great film. Scream 5, if I recall, a year and a half ago, I gave a 6 out of 10. And that's where I'm sitting with Scream 6 as well. It's a 6 out of 10 just because some scenes they just didn't really do anything right. And not just that, on top of that, nothing really scared you. No, Not really any imagery, not really any jump scares even. They mostly had jump scares over horror imagery which I prefer horror imagery to really make you feel unsettled when it comes to horror. But even the jump scares just didn't really work out. And that's where I stand because everything else works out fine if you turn your brain off. So Scream 6 is a screaming 6 out of 10 for me. Thank you.